Well, hello there my friends. Welcome back to another exciting video. This time, I didn't know if I was going to be covering, you know, this, you know, cryptid fancy paranormal monster or not, but we're going to go back to the year 2010 or 11 when this guy started bumping really big from what I can remember. His name is the Slender Man. The Slender Man is an alleged paranormal figure, you know, portrayed to have been in existence for centuries covering a large geographical area. Believers in the Slender Man tie his appearance in with many other legends around the world. You have the, the Dark Man from Scotland, the Branch Man from the Dutch area, then you have the Tall Man from Germany. Now his appearance is pretty interesting and some people's you know, portrayal of him is a little bit different. The Slender Man is a being, you know, male in appearance, who looks like a man with extremely long slender arms and legs. He also appears to have four to eight long you know, black tentacles that protrude from his back. Though different you know, photographs and enthusiasts disagree on this fact, and therefore it is theorized he can contract these tentacles at will, which means he can you know, suck them back into his body, or I guess when he's trying to ensnare somebody or something like that, they come out and then he gets a hold of them. You know, he is described as wearing a black suit strikingly similar to the visage of the notorious men in black and as the name suggests, appears very thin and able to stretch his limbs and torso to inhuman lengths in order to induce fear and ensnare his prey. Once his arms are outstretched, his victims are put into something of a, you know, a hypnotized coma where they are utterly helpless to stop themselves from waking, from walk, not waking, <laughs> from walking into them. He is also able to create, you know, tendrils from his fingers and back that he uses to walk on, you know, similar fashion to, you know, Dr. Octopus from, you know, the Spider-Man area. But then the superhuman stretching ability can also be seen as a similarity between himself and Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four. Now, whether he absorbs, kills, or merely takes his victims to an undisclosed location or dimension for that matter, is an also unknown as there are never any bodies or evidence left behind in his wake to deduce a definite conclusion. His face is pale and slightly ghostly and almost appears to have been either wrapped in a type of gauze or cloth. His facial features are also an object of debate and many people believe that his face looks different to each person. Now he sometimes is portrayed as wearing a hat which is sometimes you know a fedora or a top hat of sort. He may also be seen wearing a long flowing necktie or scarf which is either red or gray. Now all the pictures and stuff that I've seen you know of him he is not wearing a hat or anything like this at all. He often keeps his long pale hands crossed politely behind his back or hanging loosely at his sides. His suit is black, sometimes portrayed as a pinstripe in artwork, a common misconception thanks to the very similar you know, Jack Skeleton from A Night Before Christmas. He has long coattails which he lets flow proudly. He wears long dress shoes which are always shined, perfect gleaming black. So his appearance can apparently be different from, I guess, person to person. It all just depends. Much of the fascination with Slender Man is rooted in the overall aura of mystery that he is wrapped in. Despite the fact that it is rumored he kills children almost exclusively, it is difficult to say whether or not his only you know, objective is to slaughter everybody. Oftentimes, it is either reported or recorded that he can be found in sections of woods and these generally, you know, tend to be suburban areas. He also has been reportedly seen with large groups of children as many photographs portray. It is commonly thought that he resides in woods and forests and preys on mostly children. He seems unconcerned with being exposed in the daylight or captured in photos. It is often thought as well that he enjoys stalking people who become utterly paranoid about his existence, purposely you know, giving them glimpses of himself in order to further frighten them. For this reason, it seems like Slender Man very much enjoys psychologically torturing his victims. He also often appears to float or drift around rather than walk, which suggests the possibility of him being, you know, some kind of unearthly creature, you know, instead of like a normal man. This would also explain why he is able to remain immobile in spite of his poorly bizarre, you know, <laughs> proportioned body. Even though Slender Man was fabricated on a forum called Something Awful, or was he? You know, that's really the big question here. Some people have already claimed sightings. He is seen mostly at night peering into open windows and walks out in the front of, you know, lone motors or secluded roads. His main intentions appear to be kidnapping children, as when he is seen near them in photographs, 
They usually disappear shortly afterwards. The Slender Man has also inspired many stories such as those of Marble Hornets. Now, the Marble Hornet stories I have never heard of, but you know, in the end, his purpose remains, you know, a mystery. But then you have uh, an interesting take on Slender Man is by a, you know, a creepypasta member who is relying on the Marble Hornet series for you know, evidence or facts. And he just goes into talking about kind of, I guess, you know, the, sto the, the stories about from these little books. But now the weird thing is, as much as, you know, I've only started hearing about Slender Man since 2010 or 11, apparently he supposedly dates back to... Uh, 900 BC apparently, but I think that's a bit far-fetched. You have different Brazilian cave paintings, you know, depicting Slender Man. You have things from Egypt. You have German woodcuts, which that's in you know, this figurines and stuff like that. But it's it's weird. Then you have uh, you have Romanian mythology, which they kind of called him, you know, the Tall Man. But then you know, like the English mythology is referring to him as the Tree Man. So it really is, I guess, interesting. Because, you, like I'm saying, you don't know what's real, man. You don't know if the Mothman's real. Like the Yeti, what should, you know, that could probably be like an ape in the Himalayas. You got you know, the Flatwoods Monster, the Mongolian Death Worm. There's so many things that people have claimed to have seen, but at the same time is, or are they hyped up on drugs? Maybe one person's seen it, and you know, they go in the newspaper, and everybody's like, oh, okay, you know, my time to shine also. It's, it really is different, I guess. It just depends on how much you believe and all that stuff. But this was a little bit about the Slender Man, I guess, where he comes from and all that. He was, from what I know, he just originated from a, a creepypasta, you know, type story. And he just kind of, you know, blew up from there. They made a game about him, I think, back in 2010 called, uh, you know, Slender Man, the eight pages. We had to, like, collect eight pages, but each page you collected, it got more intense. Then, you know, had, you had so many Slender Man games from here on out. I think uh, a few years, a few years ago, they redid it and called it like Slender the Arrival or something like that. It's pretty interesting. You know, they made a movie too about Slender Man, but I think it, uh, I think it bombed. I think it came out last year and I don't think the ratings or anything were that great. I have yet to see it, but I mean, when everybody, I mean, everybody says it kind of sucks. It's kind of a letdown when, uh, they make movies on stuff like this and they just go in some crazy direction instead of like trying to stick to you know, I guess the good stuff. But, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, drop it a like. It means a lot. This is Monsters of Folklore, and I will, uh, I'll see you in the next video.